Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of At Home with Eastbrook Homes. On today's episode, Michael McGraw, he is the Vice President of Land Development for Eastbrook Homes. He's gonna stop by, and we're gonna talk about the art of building a community with Eastbrook Homes. And as I said, my guest today, Vice President of Signature Land Development, Michael McGraw. How are you, my friend? I am well. Thank you, Eric. How are you today? I am excellent. It is a pleasure to have you on the podcast. And, and I want to jump right into this because, as I said before we hit record, we're talking today about a thing that we really haven't dug into a little bit, and it's land development. So can you explain to us what that title entails? Land development. Well, it starts with a piece of piece of dirt. Uh, and they come in various shapes and sizes. It could be a wooded piece of dirt. It could be a farm field. But essentially, the process is taking that piece of ground from, from just a piece of ground to a community. Um, so that includes the land entitlement process, uh, which is a big piece of the upfront planning. And then of course the land planning and envisioning how the, the community might fit on that piece of land. So seeing the, seeing the property um, and trying to, trying to make something fit the property rather, rather than forcing something onto a piece of property. That's kind of what we do that I think is a little bit unique is we, we do try to adapt our plan to what the, the land is naturally giving us. What goes into the design? Because you, we're, we're not just talking about building a home or a bunch of homes. You, you hit on the word. You're building a community. And so what goes into that design process? It's a good question. And there's, there's a lot to that. So first and foremost, we got to make sure that the land is properly zoned or at least is master planned for the type of homes we want to build, the type of community we want to build. Uh, and then we work through a rather lengthy um, approval process at either the township or city, depending on the municipality within which the property is located. Uh, and part of that process will be involving one of our engineering partners to make sure uh, the utilities work. There's, there's a lot that goes into planning for sewer and water uh, and making sure the topography works and will the earth balance, you know, can we, can we, can we make the earth balance in the end? Or we don't want to have a job where we have to import or export a whole bunch of fill. So uh, there is a lot of front side planning that goes into play uh, and, and making sure that the home types we believe are needed for that particular location and that community uh, will be approved for that particular location. That's an incredible amount of logistics to get into <laughs> just one community. And so I want to know, this has obviously been a sort of bananas 18 months in your industry. When you talk about developing new communities, has that sped up for you guys? Or what, what has this done for that part, the land development part of Eastbrook Homes? I wouldn't say it has changed it a whole lot. We, we typically try to be five years out uh, in any market situation. So we, um, we have some ability to ebb and flow a bit as the market speeds up or slows, slows down because we typically have five years of land in front of us at any given time. Uh, it does give us a little latitude and doesn't force us to buy land in a very high land price market. So we could choose not to acquire more than we need right now if, if land prices are high. So, but it can, it can add to the quantity of lots we might have to develop in any given year. If we're selling at a pace of some certain number of homes a year, then certainly we want to be replacing those sales with, with more lot inventory to match that. So uh, the pace of development does change similarly to the pace of sale. Um, I guess that, that'd be the best way to summarize how the market has changed it for us. But um, it's made it more challenging, just like with home prices and home material prices. It's the same is true for uh, infrastructure costs, whether it's sanitary pipe or water main pipe or building a road, those costs have changed too. So trying to be efficient, uh, find the best ways to bring the most value to the land development side, not dissimilar from what we try to do on the home building side. Now, Michael, you just hit on a couple minutes ago, uh, maybe the top layer, so to speak, of one of the differences between your design and perhaps maybe other designs. When you're designing community, can you tell me about what makes Eastbrook's approach different than other builders? We really try to start with the end in mind uh, because we're not just the builder and we're not just the developer. We try to think about how the community is going to look when we're all done. So um, I guess that can impact all the little things we consider. Um, you know, our, our developments, I think of them as a tangible track record uh, that any township or, or city uh, employees could go look at and say, oh, do I like this? Do I want this in my community or not? Uh, same for any prospective customer. 
we like to send them back to our communities because we believe we, we, we try to think it through and do it the right way. Um, so that has to do with how do these roads terminate? What are you looking at when you come to a stop sign? Uh, where do we place our parks? Do we place them in prominent locations that make the community feel good? Um, there's a lot of small things. Tree planting, we are a big believer in the importance and the investment in landscaping and the difference that can make. Uh, not necessarily immediately because, you know, even a 10 foot tree can, can be a pretty significant investment. And it's not that 10 foot tree that makes a difference, but it's the, the 30 foot tree it becomes in 10 more years. So that I guess goes back to starting with the end in mind and making those investments in landscaping with the thought being, what is this community going to look like 10 years from now, now when I go drive through it again? Is it something, you know, is it a place I would want to live? So that's probably the difference. You know, and there's subtle, small things too, like, how do you treat corner lots? Uh, do you pay attention to the side elevation of those homes? Do you do something different to make that house look better on a corner lot than it would otherwise? If you were just a builder building one house on a lot and someone else that someone else's development, I don't think you think of it that same way. I think that that kind of holistic and seeing the whole picture maybe helps us approach it a little bit differently. And you can feel that when you visit your communities. It's got a holistic approach because I've obviously been to developments where any, I mean, I live in one where any builder does four or five houses and then Rick takes over for the net, right? And then there's, they're, they're not really connected in that holistic sort of way. And from a consumer perspective, what should they be looking for when they enter into the Eastbrook ecosystem and start looking at these communities? How should they be looking at that approach? What I'd encourage them to do is just drive through a handful of communities, drive through, drive through a bunch, drive through some of ours, drive through some of our competitors, drive through some of the ones we did five, 10, 15 years ago, and just see how it makes you feel. Because oftentimes what, what I think happens is husband or wife, they're driving through together, boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever it might be. Um, they drive through a particular project and they say, when they, when they leave, they say, man, that felt really good. Sometimes, or oftentimes, I think, they don't even really know quite what made it feel good. They just know it did feel good. Uh, we tend to believe we know why and what makes it feel right. And it's some of the things I pointed out earlier. It's just paying attention to those small details. Uh, and I would hope that if somebody did drive through ours and, and some other competitors, they would kind of feel that difference, uh, especially in ones that have been there you know, for some period of time. I think that's when you really start to see the investment in trees and landscaping pay off. It's not immediate, though it does have an, a fairly immediate impact, not as significant as it will as time passes. And that's really what we're trying to do is build communities that stand the test of time where our customers invest in something and it's got a high likelihood of appreciating in value. Uh, and, we, and we've seen that hold true. You talked about this intangible, right? a couple drives through and, and it just felt right. And they go home and they, you know, have a glass of wine and they talk about how that felt right. And they reach out to their agent and they start that process. But I'm more interested in you, Michael. When do you get that feeling? Does that happen on paper or when they break ground? Like, when does it happen for you where you go, oh, yeah, this is what I was feeling when I was designing this thing? That can happen pretty early on, uh, walking the dirt. Um, getting when you start to get your initial understanding of how the utility routing might go and what that means for can can we largely adapt to the existing topography or are we going to have to change it substantially the best properties and I think the ones that turn out the best are the ones where we can largely adapt to what's there it reduces the amount of clearing we have to do you know I mentioned planting trees but but certainly if we're able to retain trees that are 20, 30, 40, 100 years old, that has a much greater impact than planting a 10 foot tree. So that's probably something I failed to mention earlier in this interview that that, that certainly is worthy of note uh, and is probably as significant as anything. If we can work around old fence rows where somebody might have saved a whole stand of trees, we try to do that. Um, so when I start to see a piece of property where I believe, hey, they've got trees in these lower areas where we're not going to have to touch them and we can retain them. That, that is exciting. Um, you know, we start looking at kind of proposed grading plans and it shows if you're not changing the grade much going up or down, we know if there's significant vegetation in those places, we can keep it. Um, so that's kind of when you start to see a property has got some unique opportunity that we can adapt to and without massive changes, that's exciting. 
you know, as you and I were talking before we started this, you are very passionate about building these communities and doing it, doing it in a very specific way. And I wonder as we start to wrap this up, what does the future look like for you? What excites you going, you know, five years, 10 years, 25 years down the road for Eastbrook Homes and its legacy? What are the things that get you excited? We're proud of our legacy. We're proud of the fact we've been here for 54 years. We believe we can, we've we continued to adapt and grow and improve and change over the, that 54 year history. Um, the company has been in, in our family for give or take uh, 39 years. So um, I've been around it my whole life. Um, and I think what excites me most about the future and probably what the biggest challenge will be is how we continue to serve the up and coming younger buyers. I mean, that's, um, you know, it's paramount as an industry that we're providing quality housing and quality communities for people to live in and raise their kids in. Um, and that's becoming harder uh, with costs of lumber and building materials and labor and all the infrastructure costs I mentioned rising, it becomes more difficult to provide attainable housing, um, workforce housing, if you want to call it that. And not every municipality is, is as accepting to a little bit more density as others. So it's getting creative with home types, creating home types that we know people will respond to and that will like, that we can deliver to them at prices that they can afford. So um, that becomes more difficult. Anybody can go <clears throat> take a big piece of property, put big lots on it and build big houses and sell it to a small portion of, of our population and do so in a way that ends up looking pretty good, but you're leaving out a huge portion of the buying public who needs housing and wants to own housing. So that's probably the single biggest thing that excites me, but it's also a challenge. So really, I guess to summarize, it's, it's those mixed housing type projects that get me most excited, where we can serve varying age groups, varying price points. We can have kids and grandparents living in the same neighborhood. Maybe the grandparents in a condominium portion of the project, and we got kids in the single family, or even you know, young professionals in a townhome or something like that. But that's definitely what I get most excited about are the opportunities in, in the places that are open to those ideas where, where we can build communities that serve a larger cross section of our population. That's what makes me excited. I love everything about that, my friend. Michael, if people want to reach out to you guys and, and start a conversation about that, uh, where should they go and what should they do? I would suggest they go visit our website uh, at eastbrookhomes.com. We've got uh, a very up-to-date and current website. I think they can find all the information they would want. So please, uh, if you're interested, go visit us at eastbrookhomes.com. We would love the opportunity uh, to help solve your, your housing needs and uh, we would be sincerely grateful for your business. So thank you for uh, listening today. Appreciate it. Michael McGraw, Vice President of Signature Land Development. My friend, have a wonderful week. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you.